there's not much that can be salvaged. Still, the people here are busy. The floodwaters have subsided in Degendorf, revealing the scale of the damage. The water here was three and a half meters deep, right up to the top there. We're trying to make the best of it. We don't know yet if we'll have to tear down the building. The Weissmann's home was also hard hit. The sodden plaster facade has to be removed. Other people in Degendorf were hit even harder. Florian Pfeffer already knows he'll have to gut his house. The floods destroyed the insulation. I renovated my house just two years ago. It belonged to my grandparents. In 2011, I made it all new and nice. Now that was all for naught. Friends are helping him with the demolition. Most of them were affected by the floods too. They're hoping the state will come through with the promised aid. We got 1,500 euros emergency aid, but that's not enough to replace everything. Let us see if we get any more. I hope they don't leave us in the lurch. Now that the Danube and its tributaries, including the Isar, have started to recede, the full extent of the catastrophe is coming to light. Damage to local businesses amounts to many millions. The aftermath of the flood is particularly noticeable here. As the official rubbish dump has been overwhelmed, a lot of the debris is being stored for now at a gravel plant. As many as 200 truckloads arrive every day. Once the waters had receded, we wanted to help people as swiftly as possible to clear away all the rubbish and muck. Most major transport routes were blocked, so it seemed like the obvious thing to offer our company's grounds. Georg Schessel ran a restaurant and hotel until three weeks ago. It's not clear if or when he can reopen his business. He puts the damage at 1.2 million euros. Like most people in Degendorf, he was not insured against flood damage. Schessel says that here, at least, the disastrous flood might have been avoided. They have been arguing for 10 years now about reinforcing the dike on the Isar River. There were unresolved issues with property rights. Then the Nature Conservancy got involved. If a three and a half kilometer stretch of the dike had been strengthened, I think this mess would never have occurred. The plan is to build new dikes and shore up existing ones as quickly as possible, even if some farmers will have to sacrifice parts of their land for the floodplain. But the local authorities argue that flood management has to be the top priority. The question now is, can we finally agree on where the dikes should be built? Or will the arguing continue for years to come? Right now, the mood is very gung-ho. But in a month or two, it could all be different, and they could start arguing again about protecting every flower. Conservationist Georg Kestel argues that dikes alone will not solve the problem, because they restrict the natural course of a river and merely displace the risk of flooding. It means losing more floodplains and channeling the water further downstream. So Passau would then be facing even higher water levels, as would Austria, Hungary and Slovakia. It's just passing the buck. In Degendorf, Edeltraut Müller watched the floods arrive. This was her living room. A skip floated down from the industrial park. The fence stopped it, otherwise it would have ended up in the neighbor's veranda. The water was about two meters deep. Mrs. Müller's daughter, Sandra Holzhacker, says there was a positive aspect to the disaster. 
It was amazing how everybody helped. Complete strangers came and asked if we needed any help. It was incredible. They just came to us spontaneously. Donations are piled up in a garage at the edge of town. People who lost their possessions to the waters can take what they need, even large kitchen appliances. We've received several hundred tons of aid, at first from local people, then from all over the country, and now lots of companies are donating things too. Solidarity and the kindness of strangers may have helped soften just slightly the floodwaters' devastating blow.